Hi, everybody. I'm Grace Matthews. I'm, I'm the vice president of Anyone Can Fly Foundation. Thanks for coming to our 20th party. <laughs> and here's our honored guest, Marla Jackson. And Marla is the artist and creator of these beautiful books that you see behind. And they'll talk about it when they get into their interview. Um, we first presented, we presented the first Distinguished Scholar in 2004, and that was Quest Venbeer. She was also a cult historian, so we're kind of coming full circle with Mark. Wow. So Mark Fabe's going to have a little talk with Marla, and then our other honored guest, Sarah Vine, who created the fashion, is not well today, and she won't be able to come. But I think Michelle will come up and tell you about her so you know a little, you get a little history about the pieces that you see. And so, yes, Sarah did all the fashion on the end. And this coast. So Michelle will fill you in when Faith and Marla get finished. Did, did I do no. this for Faith? Yeah, yes, you did. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Great. So, you already said this. Yeah. And I stopped 
I stopped because I got scared. <laughs> I something's and we're moving too fast, I said. We're moving too fast. I better slow down because somebody's telling me something. And I had all of this research, primary documentation about this slave. And people were knocking at my museum door, ringing the doorbell. So I said, I got to get out of here. So I gave them my eviction, you know, my notice, got a smaller museum, and became research. I mean, you had to sign a confidentiality agreement to come in. So I said, I'm going to celebrate this woman and every quilt artist I know in the world. Nobody knew this was coming. The last time Lawrence, Kansas was hit was Quan Trail and his raiders and seven black men burned the town down. <laughs> And so I didn't tell them what I was doing. And um, started my own little museum. And I contacted uh, Susan Earle, who's a curator at Spencer Museum, because my children, my students, have exhibitions there. And I told them that I would like to have the first national African American quilt convention in their museum. And uh, they said yes. Sure, because Susan Earl loves African American quilts. And they had purchased the Flaxbury quilt. I said, though I'm in now. <laughs> I said, oh, this is going to go real, real well when I tell them that I contacted Faith Ringo and she's going to be our keynote speaker. Mm -hmm. And so I contacted the Lead Center, my good friend there. He says, well, Faith should be speaking at the Lead Center. She's too good for the Spencer. <laughs> Everybody was fighting. Everybody had a role. The Lawrence Art Center, no, we want Faith Ringo here. You know, and I said, well, the good thing is that I'm the boss. <laughs> I loved it. I got a $40,000 grant, the biggest grant that anyone got in Lawrence, Kansas for the art. So the fight, the dinner was the war behind the scenes. And I said, this is sort of like Martin Luther King now. We're breaking ground. You could knock me down, but I'm going to get back up. I got back up, you know. And yes. And so I, you know, and I, I was being attacked by some sisters saying, you know, this, this has never happened. This is not going to work. And I said, the word no means nothing to me, but you need to know more about what I'm going to do. And I was on Facebook and I saw this beautiful work by Sarah Bunn and I contacted Sarah Bunn and she said yes. And we put on this extra, extra I can't even say it, extravaganza. <laughs> it, was, it was like the first step in heaven. If you ever thought you were gonna get to heaven, it was. <laughs> And Faith Ringo said, look, girl, you need to sit down and rest. <laughs> <laughs> how did you come to meet Carolyn Maslumi? Carolyn Maslumi, how I met Carolyn Maslumi. I, um, my daughter bought me a book for, um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I had two. That's, that's my sister. <laughs> oh. Hello, sister. <laughs> <laughs> that I love. <laughs> um, Carolyn Maslumi invited, anyway, I met Carolyn Maslumi. I went to the Spirit of the Cloth at the Spin, uh, Smithsonian Museum. My husband was on there for a meeting, and he took me, and I saw this magnificent quilt exhibition, and I was just the mayor. That was 2000, and f was it 2001 or 2004? It was early, it was early. And um, I had made all these quilts. I didn't know what I was doing, you know? And I showed her my firstborn quilt. I said, I'm not sure about it. Colonel Maslin said, get that quilt to me in the mail right away. Mm -hmm. And so I really physically met Carolyn at the Museum of Biblical Art, where I met you. Mm -hmm. And when we had Quest of Benberry's reception. Yes. So was that about 2001 or four? It was early. 
early 2000s. And so I sent Carolyn my second quilt, and Carolyn Mazzoni sent it back to me. And I wanted to know, well, what's going on here? <laughs> what's wrong? And so Carolyn critiqued my quilt, and I listened. I listened to her. You know, and then 20 years later, I'm still listening. And so she said, you need your, she says, you need a museum. I said, it's okay. But the first person told me I need a museum was my husband, because he, every time he walked through the house, he got stuck by a pen. <laughs> he says, he says when, there's, when there's material in the bathroom, it's time for you to go. Uh -oh. <laughs> he says, but I, I didn't tell you to go out and get a 3,500 square foot museum. <laughs> wow. So he she rocked it. And, and then Carol, you know, and that's how I met Carolyn. So Carolyn became my mentor because what I liked about Carolyn Maslin is she was very direct and very honest, like Michelle Bishop. Mm -hmm. Michelle Bishop is the reason why the convention became successful. Really? Because she taught me step by step what to do. Mm -hmm. And there she is. Right. And right. so it, it was our actual village. Right. It was a village. Uh, <laughs> what kind of art did you have in school? We I had glass blowing. I went to I grew up in Rolla Township, a small black community of five hundred privileged little black kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had glass blowing. Um, I had painting. My mother was an artist, so my mama made dolls and you name it, my mom upholstered furniture. You come home, you didn't know what you were going to expect. You, couldn't want to. you didn't know what the surprise was going to be. She took the installation out of the furnace and made lampshades, you know. She covered shoes and she took, would go to the Goodwill and make suits for my brothers for Easter. And she would die, she would go to the Goodwill and get blouses and dye them up and put lace on them and buttons, you know. and. Uh, my mother would create, she'll come home from work the next morning, she'd have a brand new coat she's made, you know. So it was just, every day we wrote poetry and we had, it was eight of us kids and we had talent shows and we could watch television every now and then, but we had to create. Right. And my punishment was making bound buttonholes. <laughs> <laughs> and broke out. <laughs> That is so true because when I was, of course I'm a lot older than you are, but uh, so women, all of our mothers could sew and they taught us to sew. And they, they made the clothes for the kids. So it was just natural. It was a natural. It was a natural thing. We couldn't go out and buy anything, you know, mm -hmm. resale stores, you know, and with the best fabrics. And everything had to be unique. It couldn't look like anybody else. Nobody else. else. <laughs> no, not this business of, oh, oh no. I know where you got that. No, 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 no you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't. 